All right, so let's talk about Chris Stuckman and Madam Web and why YouTube movie criticism sucks even more than it used to, and it was already pretty bad. So I don't really talk that much with the rest of my profession, such as it is here, save for when there's either some noteworthy scandal happening or when we're talking about the latest embarrassment from the likes of this particular strain of assholes. But to be fair, I don't really see this particular strain of assholes being the same profession, just because we also technically speak into cameras and microphones about media. Frankly, I'm reluctant to say we belong to the same species. E-girls being like, I'm such a nerd, I'm such a geek. No. You're an opportunist. What is more important to our culture than the Joker? FUCKING PRONOUNS! Peach. Peach! Yeah. Princess Peach! Yeah. Of giving her pants. In any case, I otherwise don't really get into it with other movie critics in general, because it's not really my style, even if I seriously disagree, especially if it's somebody I have no general objection to, even if I'm not necessarily a regular can't-miss viewer, which brings me to Chris Stuckman. And to be clear, as far as I know, I don't have any beef with Stuckman. Gotta put the qualifier in there, since these days I've completely given up on trying to keep track of who's good with who and why anymore, since you generally never know who you'll run into that seems perfectly decent, and it turns out, well, actually, I read some decade-old lie about you on a forum somewhere and believed it, so I hate you for no reason. I don't like you, and you don't like me. You don't like me? I like you. You do? But as far as I know, I've got no reason for bad blood with Chris, and the only reason he's not necessarily in the first wave of voices I turn to for reviews personally is honestly the same reason I don't check out a lot of popular online reviewers first or regularly. They remind me of me. <laughs> I feel like a lot of us come from similar backgrounds with similar points of reference, and I already know what I think or am likely to think, so my more immediate interest is usually in alternate takes or dissenting takes or just a different, more expansive perspective that's going to keep me from being encased in the kind of experiential bubble that turns you into one of these things. Not saying that's how everyone should do it, but it works for me. In any case, my general view of Stuckman is that he's sharp, and I'm impressed by anyone who keeps this pace and gets their own original work out, too. Opinions on his opinions are irrelevant to me, especially to this current stupidity that has the internet all big mad at him. Uh, to get you up to speed, over the weekend, in lieu of posting a review of Madam Web, the new Sony-produced Marvel-adjacent but not really Spider-Women versus Evil Spider-Man movie that everyone, including very obviously the cast, is clearly known would be terrible for months now. You read and you signed on for Madam Web to what we see on screen. Was there a lot of changes or not so much? There were drastic changes. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't even tell well, you what they were. In the Marvel Universe, and it also stars Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> so it's kind of like if AI generated your boyfriend's perfect movie and apparently is in fact terrible, Stuckman posted a review talking about Sony's deeply cynical-seeming production approach to these and other recent films, and more broadly using it as a prism to explore his views on the broken Hollywood industry as it exists today, as he's had some experience with having produced an independent feature of his own. I won't say that I agree with all of his specific conclusions in the details, he honestly puts a lot in there to digest, but he diagnoses the scope and source of the issue very thoroughly, and in the kind of solid, plain terms that a YouTube personality with his kind of big audience and broad appeal ought to be using to get what he clearly feels is an important point across to that audience. Where a lot of people seem to be having, in my view, way too much of a problem is that he chooses not to review the movie, reiterating a position he's had for a while now since he's begun working in and around the industry itself, that he wants to extenuate positivity where possible and not simply dwell on negativity for negativity's sake, even though everyone in this side of the business can tell you that outside of a handful of select channels, YouTube is a hate machine that runs on bile and nerd rage just like the rest of the internet. Having seen the film, I'm going to tell you that this is not a movie review of Madam Web. I am not about bashing filmmakers, artists. I know how hard it is to make a movie. I do not know how hard it is to make a movie under the studio system. I was able to make an indie film without a giant corporation breathing down my neck, which is not the privilege that S.J. Clarkson had when she directed Madam Web under Sony, which I can only imagine was monumentally difficult. And to be certain, people are furious at him, calling him a traitor, a sellout, a shill, hurling accusations, and that's just the nice stuff. I've even seen borderline casting of aspersions from well-meaning people who I feel like are really missing the mark and should know better on this one, but make no mistake, to the surprise of nobody, the angriest anger is coming from the type of content grind rage bait tubers who've made performative overhating on certain designated bad movie targets of the moment their bread and butter, as though they feel for the first time called out and made to feel less than noble about doing over the 
top dogpiling and kick them when they're down of films and filmmakers by someone in the club, so to speak, saying, nah, I'm just not going to join in on that. Even though he didn't say that. In fact, he makes it really clear between the lines what he thought of the movie. He merely also says that he perceives in it the bigger systemic flaws of a studio and studio system that's more compelling, useful, and necessary thing for him to be making a video out of instead of joining a chorus that's all kind of saying the same damn thing. Which it sounds like he doesn't even really disagree with. I can see valid rationales to not agree with his approach or his stance from a logical standpoint, but I don't see why you'd be mad about having one less snarky poll quote about why Madam Webb is the suckiest bunch of suck to ever suck sitting in the green column on the fucking tomato meter. Now, I haven't watched Madam Webb yet either since the Boston area press screening was cancelled because of a snow forecast that didn't happen this weekend, and this weekend it was honestly less important to watch a new Sony Marvel movie for me than it was to write scripts and work on our new upcoming series, This Movie Exists, debuting soon. I mean, I will now, because apparently it's unusually bad, but at this present issue goes, I feel where Stuckman is coming from, and I ain't mad at him. I get it, I think he's valid here. People, it's up to you. If the movie stinks, just don't go. If, if the, the movie stinks, stinks just, just don't go. go. Uh-oh, the jig is up. I also feel like I maybe even get it a little more, like, in the ether, but I want to make it clear, I don't really know Chris, I'm not assuming anything extra in terms of meaning on his part, this is a thousand percent me speaking about me only and very likely projecting some I can relate that's plausibly mostly in my head, granted, but I do feel like a part of the reason I get where he's coming from is because I felt a lot of similar reticence about negative feedback loops and the way the 2020s media fandom emphasizes rage, hate, performative bashing in lieu of informed or even entertaining analysis amplified by the unavoidable fact that the flavor of rage that's emphasized and rewarded has become slanted in a very specific lopsided direction culturally and politically. Once more, just me speaking for me here. One, if not the most popular high traffic videos on this channel is still my review of the movie Pixels in 2015, which was very honest as to how I was feeling at the time and also a very loud angry, full of inventive cursing, and pretty ragey snark about the actors appearing therein. I'm glad people like that one. I'm still glad for the traffic it pulled in, continues to pull in the interview with the New Yorker I got out of it, and all the positive attention that I got for being so negative. The thing is, in terms of tangible benefit, kind of short-lived. There was some media work interest afterwards, took some phone calls. Funny thing, once it was clear that I wasn't a YouTube angry reviewer, that I hadn't previously and wasn't looking to just start putting on an angry voice and doing a bit and work that niche regardless of what the subject was, so that my actual goals were to do real things, that my criticism was always aiming for authenticity even when I was also doing humor, the especially charged interest kind of tapered off a lot. And that's not to say nobody cared anymore. I kept on posting reviews, we did really that bad, with a deliberately less confrontational tone, pitched in when people tried to restart the escapist and got the big picture IP back out of that. All good things. Not here to complain or lament my choices, at least not about this. But what was clear to me was that pop media discourse, in terms of what the people who manage the money and decide the shape of those things, was, even then, starting to be deliberately steered in a rage cell so rage is all we will sell direction, and I didn't want to make only or even more of that kind of content. And I'm comfortable with that even though clearly there was profit to be made and others were more than happy to make it. The real people are out there and the real people are, are calling it out. Barbie is like the deformed, mutated rage child of Captain Marvel, Ghostbusters 2016, and She-Hulk. Japan, you're our last bastion. Oh my god. Everybody knows <laughs> It's going to be endless lecturing. That's why Top Gun did so well. In any case, a bit less than a year after that, there was much more infamous incident that was kind of the exception opposite of my whole predicament, but in hindsight, more like a mirror to Stuckman's now. James Rolfe, aka the angry video game nerd, put up a video about how basically he wasn't planning on watching or reviewing the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot when it came out because he didn't want to. He didn't think it looked good, wasn't really into name-only IP reboots, people were going to be asking him for a review because he covered nostalgia material and he said he was a big Ghostbusters fan. Yeah. If you remember this at all, or you remember the shit show people would get up to make of that movie before it came out, it's understandable, I guess, that a lot of people assumed he was basically joining in the Manosphere hate boner boycott of it for being female-led, and plus we'd just been through the whole successive bullshit of Gamergate and the Trump versus Hillary election, and ugh, yeah, my own hindsight criticism of his move here, if I were to make one, would be that's why you don't do an announcement about staying on the sidelines, you just do that and stay on the sidelines. But I can also see, having watched his career for about as long as we've both been doing this, a thought process of, I should tell people just not to ask me about it, that'll be the end of it, and not realizing that will definitely not be the end of it. There never was much hope. Just a fool's hope. 
which is pretty much what happened here, and while I also still get why others jump to conflate I refuse with the nastier, agenda-driven stuff, from my perspective, that wasn't really fair. Because the thing is, whatever you think about the non-review, James pretty much invented this whole absurd profession, me, him, Stuckman, the whole ridiculous lot of us are in, he knows how to survive and thrive and catch a hype wave in this game better than anybody over the age of 19 who wasn't born with a fucking tablet in their hands can at this point, and he didn't do what you do when you are being performative and only writing the algorithm about that kind of thing, which is, say you're not into a thing, say it again, say it again, rile people up to 11, do a million videos about only that thing that you supposedly hate until being the guy that hates that thing is your whole personality and you can start a monetized Zoom stream with six other assholes who all hate the same or adjacent thing. In She-Hulk, there's like a meta reference to how perfect Kevin Feige's formula is. And it's like, with yeah, Kevin. it's perfect, isn't it? Seeing as we are unfamiliar with sarcasm, I shall close the register at this point. He just said, not feeling this, moved the hell on, even as people were really laying into him as though the pre-existing internet misogyny way for that movie was his invention. He didn't make a thousand Ghostbusters videos, he didn't go on other channels and podcasts and whine that people were cancelling him. I mean, granted, going all the way back to pre-YouTube, he's been the least online of online creators you could imagine, but still. And with almost a decade behind us now, I can't not wonder if, in addition to genuine disinterest in what ended up being a just okay, kind of forgettable movie, maybe he wasn't feeling the same kind of of gathering darkness on the horizon that I felt with the narrowness of what actual growth opportunities were or weren't there after my sort of moment with that Pixels glow up a year earlier, and that I now somewhat suspect may, I stress may, also be roiling around in the subtext of Stuckman, effectively dropping 2024's Mirror Mirror version of No Review I Refuse for Madam Web. That on top of his existing, already stated, no doubt sincere reasons to not do a review, that there's also a no-win state to the whole stupid discourse over the whole stupid movie having morphed into yet a another politicized storm of talking points where what he or anyone else has to say about the film or even the film itself are totally secondary to its role as a culture war inkblot test. Once again, zero evidence one way or another that Chris feels strongly one way or the other about that aspect of this, but that aspect definitely feels strongly about him. Because team my wife and kids left so I turned right geek media are the ones who went most apeshit about his non-review stance, acting as though he betrayed some YouTube critic code by not joining the pile on, and I think that's honestly their issue. By choosing not to do easy bullshit anti-woke bait or even just haha bad movie is bad content bait and still succeed, he's putting a spotlight on how tacky, empty, follow the leader phony this last honest man truth spewing shtick really is and how lazy the discourse machine they serve is. Can't have that. You know what really grinds my gears? You, America. F*** you! Is Madam Web good? If it's bad, is there anything interesting about it? I got four hours out of Batman v Superman, and as far as I'm concerned, that was one of the actual worst films ever produced, so you tell me. But good or bad isn't the point anymore. Good or bad isn't what people have been conditioned to care enough about by our ignorant modern media discourse. What they care about is to argue whether or not a genre movie made by and starring mostly women making or not making money can be used as a rhetorical cudgel by middle-aged right-wing media goons to keep the gas lit on the narrative that drives their traffic and audience engagement. And some Something that I suspect everyone knows but nobody wants to say is that YouTube's shitty algorithm has basically allowed and even tacitly encouraged this kind of garbage content to take over the platform as Gen Z and influencer culture migrates to newer hubs like TikTok and the aging millennial and Gen X viewership that remains here calcifies in its consumer psychology the exact way the boomers did with TV and radio. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. It'll happen to you. Going from wanting fresh content to nostalgia content to nostalgia imperilment content, where instead of remember that thing you liked, it's now all about the kids and the new people are changing and ruining everything you used to like and you have to protect it from them as the new button to hit over and over and over and you can either be for fighting that fake woke boogeyman or against it, but there can be no nuance and no sideline. Did you think the Marvels was fine, not God's gift to movies, but also not the worst version of anything by any reasonable metric? I did, but nobody wants to fucking hear that, and I might as well have said it was the second coming, and let a mounted cavalry attack on the nearest Chick-fil-A flanked by Rainbow Mickey Bannermen for the way people act if you don't say its production was a literal war crime. It sucks or it rules, it's perfect or it's garbage, it's team sports, which is also our entire culture and politics and language of social interaction. Not, to be perfectly crystal clear again, and not misunderstood or misquoted about this because anyone actually thinks, well, I'm an intelligent and progressive-minded person, I I need to prove it by forcing myself to like a bad movie because it has lady superheroes in it. Because the thing about actually being intelligent and progressive-minded is, your brain actually works, so it doesn't work like that. No, what does happen 
is the discourse gets flattened out. The contrast knob gets cranked all the way to monochrome black and white because who wants to even engage even a tiny bit when all the oxygen is getting sucked out by grotesque beardo misogynists, retrograde religious nuts, and whatever this is, and Chris Gore, and with the total lack of nuance now firmly ensconced, who wants to run the risk of even being mistaken for being on even a little bit the same team as that? And even if you're not, why would you even want to be in the same discussion space where that's part of the median voice? Why wouldn't you nope out and talk about production and studio issues and more interesting things, especially if you've got your own fun real projects to build out and promote like Stuckman does? I mean, it's not fun. You think it's fun for me to cover this because it's inarguably relevant, I can't avoid the subject, and if the content frequency drops on this channel, I lose out on the revenue I'm working my ass off to get this movie exists launched for in the first place? It's not. Not really. Rather be location shooting right now for, well, I, I can't talk about that yet. Ahem. <laughs> I'm deliberately recording this audio before I go to watch the movie, finally, having blocked out some time. I don't know if I'll do a review, and I don't think it matters if I do. Like I said, it's not interesting or compelling as watching the internet get mad at a guy for saying he thinks there's a more interesting story to tell about a bad film than haha, it's bad and it looked bad, so for what it's worth, I think he did the right thing. I think it's more evident that he did when you look at the caliber of person that's most angry at him over it, and I also recognize that there's a degree of irony in taking this much time to swing back around to saying really only that. Yeah, I think mean, he was right. But that's why the show is called The Big Picture. <laughs>